Okay, so in chapter 7.2, I just want to talk about three concepts. I want to talk about distance between two points. I want to talk about the midpoint between on a line between two points. And I want to talk about the equation of a circle. So distance, let's start with that. Nothing too big going on here, as long as you're comfortable with the Pythagorean theorem. So let me draw a set of axes. Here are axes. And let's say we have two points. Doesn't matter what they are. X1, Y1. Oh, actually, let me put that on the other side. Just to make some room. So this is going to be the point X1, Y1. And this is going to be the point X2, Y2. Well, we want to find the length of the line between these guys. That's what we're looking for. So, the nice thing about the Cartesian coordinate system, it's all in rectangles. So, you know, or you can easily figure out, the length of both sides of this triangle that you draw, where you just drop a vertical line from your second point and a horizontal line from your first point. So this is going to have the x-coordinate of my second point and the y-coordinate of my first point. Well, I know that the length of the vertical line here is the difference in the um, and the y-coordinates. So this is y2 minus y1 in length. And vertically, it's the difference between our x-coordinates, x2 minus x1. You can imagine on our number line, here's x1, here's x2, and this distance here, just like on a number line, just subtract the points, and you get that distance. And the same thing applies for the y's. This is y1. This is y2. So this length here in green is the distance between them. Just subtract them. Okay. And we know one line is horizontal, one line is vertical. So we have a right angle. Hey, look, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's call this, I don't know, let's call this side D, I guess, for distance. Then, by Pythagoras, I know that, well, d squared, that's a hypotenuse, equals the length of one, one of the legs, let's say the horizontal leg, that's x2 minus x1 squared, plus the length of the vertical leg squared, so that's y2 minus y1 squared. And I just want to make a quick note. The order of the points here doesn't really matter. Since if you had x1 minus x2, you're squaring it anyway. So if it was negative, it would become positive anyway. So order here isn't going to matter. And to solve for the distance, remember the distance is d, we just need to take the square root of both sides. And remember that, just as a quick reminder, the square root of a plus b isn't the same thing as the square root of a plus the square root of b. You can see that. Right. So, and in particular, the square root of a squared plus b squared isn't the same as the square root of a squared plus the square root of b squared. So be careful there. You can't separate these square roots. Um, you have to solve everything underneath first and then take the square root at the end. So we can simplify this. The square root of d squared is, of course, d. And we can't simplify the right-hand side anymore, so we just have to leave it as x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, which you can also see, and you'll see um, in other places, as your change in x squared plus your change in y squared. So they kind of mean the same thing. Let's do a quick example just to see how this works. So, let triangle ABC 
have vertices. Let's say A is going to be 2, 3. B is going to be 3 minus 1. And C is going to be 0, 6. So our question is, is this triangle acute, obtuse, or right angled? So again, many times it's a good idea to just sketch what's happening so you get a feel for the answer. So, let's mark its points, two, three, four, two, three, four. Okay, so we know we have the points A is two, three, so here's A, B is three minus one, here is B. And C is 0, 6. So those are the three points of our triangle. And if you look at this, well, if we connect these points, I think it's pretty easy to say. Oh, that line was not a good one. Let me do it over here. It's pretty easy to see that um, this is going to be an obtuse triangle. Here's our super wide obtuse angle right there. But let's show this algebraically. Just sketching a diagram and saying, oh, this is bigger than 90 degrees because it looks bigger than 90 degrees. It's good um, as something to see what's happening. But if you want to show it algebraically, if you want to be precise about it, you do need some algebra. So we kind of see what's going to happen here. It looks like BC is going to be the longest side, and we're going to compare it to AC and AB. And then via the Pythagorean inequalities, we'll show that this is indeed an obtuse triangle. So we need our lengths first. So let's find the length. Let's do all three sides. Let's find the length of AB first. So remember, that's going to be the square root of the difference of the y of the x coordinates squared. So a has x coordinate 2, b has x coordinate 3, so it's going to be 2 minus 3 squared plus the difference in the y coordinates 3 and minus 1 plus 3 minus minus 1 squared. And we work that out so we get the square root of well 2 minus 3 is negative 1 Negative 1 squared is, of course, 1. 3 minus a minus 1 is 3 plus 1, which is 4. And 4 squared is 16. So this is a line of line segment of length square root 17. And similarly, for AC, well, AC, we have x coordinates 2 and 0. So this is going to be 2 minus 0 squared plus, well, the y-coordinates are going to be 3 and 6. So we get 3 minus 6 squared. So 2 minus 0 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 3 minus 6 is minus 3. Minus 3 squared is 9. So we have the square root of 4 plus 9, which is, of course, the square root of 13. And notice, we're not allowed to separate these um, into separate square roots, because plus signs and minus signs don't play well with square root symbols. So you need to solve what's under the square root symbol. And finally, well, BC is going to be the square root of... Well, we'll take our x values, 3 and 0. So this is going to be 3 minus 0 squared. 
and then minus 1 and 6. So it's going to be minus 1 minus 6 squared. So 3 minus 0 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Minus 1 minus 6 is minus 7. Minus 7 squared is positive 49. So we get square root 56. Now, let's check if um, our intuition on um, the graph here is correct. So, is the square of AB plus the square of AC, is that smaller than the square of BC? If that's the case, then we have an obtuse triangle. And, well, we have square root 17 squared. So the square roots cancel. This is pretty easy. This is just 17. AC is 13 and square root thir sorry, is square root 13 and square root 13 squared is 13. So it's 17 plus 13. Remember the square and the square root are canceling here. So I have the square root of 17 squared, which is 17. The square root of 13 squared, which is 13. And this is, we should put question marks over these because we're not sure yet, we're checking. So this is a square root of 56 squared, so 56. And it's pretty obvious that 30 is indeed less than 56. Our longest side is quite a bit longer than the others. So triangle A, B, C is indeed obtuse. So the big thing with that is if you have two points and you have the coordinates of them, then you have the length of the line between them, which is great. So let's do one more example. So a square has vertices. I'll give you two of them. One, two, and one minus two. Find um, coordinates for the other vertices. So that the square has minimal area. All right. So for this problem, let's do a little bit of a sketch and go from there. So I want to sketch the points 1, 2, and 1, minus 2. So 1, 2 is here, and 1 minus 2 is here. Now if we think about it, there are two choices for these vertices. Maybe they're adjacent in a square, so maybe they make up one side, and in that case, your square would look something like that. In fact, we know this side is going to have length 4, so this side would have length 4 as well. You could check that that side is length 4 since we have um, two points. You could use the distance formula, or you could just realize it's a vertical line, so you just subtract y coordinates. So that's one possibility, but another possibility is that they're not adjacent, that they are diagonal vertices, that the square is actually more like a diamond. And in that case, you get something that'll look roughly, again, this is just a sketch, like that. And I think it's pre pretty easy to see by the sketch that the diagonal vertices are going to give you a smaller um, area. So this is the situation that we want. So 
I'll just write down, and you guys can check it. So the area of when you have uh, your two points be adjacent vertices, that is, of course, 16 units squared. So we're looking for the area of this other case where we have diagonal vertices. Both of these vertices, they're not adjacent, they're across the diagonal. So we're going to have to figure out the area of this figure, and this is going to be a little bit more work, but not too much more work. So what I'd like to show is that basically, well, I want to show that the area of this guy is small, and if I get that, well, I'll, I will have known the vertices, so they're the vertices I'm looking for in the question. So to be able to find those, here's going to be my plan of attack. Well, if I can show that the diagonals of a um, square meet at each other's midpoints, and they are indeed um, perpendicular to each other, then I should be able to use some sort of congruence argument to be able to get the lengths of these sides here. So that's going to be my plan. So let me quickly go through kind of this argument. I don't want to do it totally in depth with the two line proof or anything. But if you wanted to be precise about it, or you're asked to be precise, this is kind of how you'd go about it. I'll just talk my way through it. So here is our, uh, let me draw the square a little better. It's not bad. We'll say all those sides are the same length. So we have this diagonal. And we have this other diagonal as well. So you can see here, I'm going to trace out for now two of these congruent triangles, or I'll show that they're congruent in a second. So I have those two triangles, and they're isosceles too. So I know they have the same length, and I know that these angles here, which I'll also mark in green, are right angles. So we can use side angle side if you like, or we could just note that they're isosceles triangles. So we know that these angles are the same. And similarly, we could draw um, the triangles the other way, and we can get that these angles are the same. So we have that all of these angles, let me draw it again without these in here. So, we know all of these sides are congruent, and we know all of these angles are congruent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight angles. So, via side angle no, sorry, angle, side, angle, we have that congruence. We get that these four smaller triangles are congruent. We know two angles and the included side, so we can use angle, side, angle. So that gives us the rest of the angles here are congruent. So again, let me draw it again without those in there. And what we get, well, we get that these four angles here are congruent, since all four of those triangles are congruent via angle, side, angle. And they must add up to 360 degrees, because they make a full circle. Well, if they're four of the same measure angle, and they add up to 360, well, 360 divided by 4 is 90 degrees. So all these guys, of course, are 
90 degree angles. So we guess that these diagonal lines are indeed perpendicular. That's great. So we have that, let me label these here. We'll call this A, B, C, D. So we have that AB is perpendicular to CD. Now we just need to show that they meet at each other's midpoints. Well, that's not too bad. We know that since these lines here are all the same length. So that means they meet at each other's midpoints. So let's call this point in the middle. I don't know what we should call it. Let's call it uh, M, I guess. So M is the midpoint. of AB and it's the midpoint of CD. And finally, well, if we show they're the same length, then if we can figure out the length of one, we know the length of the other. So how do we show that? Well, again, let me draw another copy of my diagram here. Well, this green triangle that I'm going to draw. Again, we know these side lengths are all the same. And we know these angles are all 90 degrees. And let me draw one of the other triangles in the other direction. So let's draw this guy in yellow. So, via angle side, or sorry, side angle side, again, here's side angle side for green and side angle side for yellow, I get that these triangles, the green and yellow triangles, are congruent. And that tells me that this green diagonal and this yellow diagonal are the same length. So it tells me that. AB equal, sorry, yeah, AB equals CD. And actually, I'm being careless here. These are line segments. So let me put line segments here. And I'm talking about the length of these lines when I just use the notation without the line segment over it. So we have those three facts. And that tells us the following thing. Well, we can tell pretty easily, we know this point here, is 1, 2. This is the point 1 minus 2. So the length of the line AB is just the difference in the y coordinates. So it's just y2 minus y1. You could use the distance formula, you would get the same answer, which is 2 minus minus 2, which is of course 4. So we know that the length of this guy is 4. We also know that this vertical line, um, its midpoint is M, so either side has length. Maybe I'll use red for it rather than blue. Two. So the length of AM is two, the length of BM is two. Well, the line CD, because it's perpendicular to AB, we proved that, or at least we talked how you would uh, prove that. And we know M is the midpoint of that. And we know that CD is the same length as AB. Well, these lengths are two as well. And we can figure out the coordinate of M. Well, M is halfway between two and minus two in the Y coordinate. It's on the same vertical line as one, two. So it has the same X coordinate. So its coordinate is zero. And we'll talk a little bit more about midpoints in a little bit. So, we know we want this length here, which I'll do in yellow. We want this to be 2, and we want this to be 2. So we need to change the x-coordinates this time. So the x-coordinate of C 
is going to be two more than one. So it's going to be three. And it's going to have the same y coordinate as m because they're on the same horizontal line. So its y coordinate is going to be zero. And similarly for d, d is going to be negative one, zero, two less than m, but with the same y coordinate since they lie on the same horizontal line. So there we go. We figured out what c and d were, and at least we talked about the proof of why we could do that. So it is a little bit uh, involved, but it definitely can be done. You could do it via two-line proof is probably the most precise way. But remember, we're looking for the area, so we need to find the length of line of any of these lines. Let's say, oh, I didn't want to do that. Let's say AD here. So let's use our distance formula to figure out that. So the length of AD is the square root of the difference in the x coordinates. So 1 minus a minus 1 squared plus the difference in the y coordinates. 2 minus 0 squared. And 1 minus minus 1 is, of course, 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 minus 0 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So this is square root 8. So we know the length of any side of this triangle is square root 8. Great. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I did want to do that. Okay. So we know the area of our square here, or our diagonal square, it's still a square, but it looks like a diamond, is s squared, which is square root 8 squared, which is, of course, 8 units squared. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to use these ideas of both algebra using coordinates, so we use the distance formula and we use a little bit of midpoint stuff, and using the idea of congruent triangles, so using some geo geometric knowledge without the idea of coordinates, using those tools together to um, prove some results. So this is a pretty cool example. So the next result I want to talk about is how to find the midpoint of a line segment. So, um, in the interests of time, I'll just point you to where the proof is. So the proof of this is on page 788 and 789 of your book. And it's worth looking at that. Again, we're using both some geometric results and some algebraic results to prove what we need. But I will tell you, if we have some point x1, y1, and some point x2, y2, the point in the middle here That, let's call it m, well, the coordinate of this is going to be, well, it's going to be the average of the x-coordinates. That's going to be the x-coordinate of your midpoint. And the average of the y-coordinates of both points is going to be your y-coordinate. And this is a midpoint, so remember, this is the point that splits your line into two equal pieces. So that's going to be really helpful. We can always find the uh, coordinates of a midpoint if we have the other two points. And we're going to use this in an example in just a little bit. Now I do want to talk about circles as the last thing in this section. So what is a circle? It's the best way to think about it. Well, you just draw a line and then it becomes your radius. And you move that a line around a circle so that all points that line distance, that radius R, all points R away from your center, which we'll call C for center, they're the points on your circle. So it's all points a fixed distance Let's call it R 
from the center point, and we'll call that C. And let's say C is coordinates. I don't know why these are used, but they're commonly used, the letters H and K. So H is your X coordinate of your circle. Remember, X always goes first. Y, K is your Y coordinate of your circle. Then, well, if this is a point on my circle, let's call it X, Y. If this is a point on my circle, well, I know the length of this line. This is R. So if I know that length, and I know two points here, I know HK, I know XY, I know it has length R, I can use that to come up with an equation for a circle. So that tells me that, well, R is the square root of H minus X. So, or let's write it the other way. It's more traditionally written the other way. It doesn't matter what order you have the points in because you're going to square them anyway, which gets rid of the negative if you do it the other way. So x minus h squared and the distance or the difference in your y coordinates. y minus k squared. And usually it's written so you square both sides and you get that r squared equals h sorry x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. So this is the equation of a circle. And let's do a quick example just to see how this works. So let's scroll up here. So let's find the equation of a circle with um, endpoints of a diameter let's say uh, let's do 4 negative 1 and let's do and negative what negative 6 3 that will do And of course, a good idea always is to sketch the situation to make sure you understand what's going on. So we have the points for negative 1. So here's one end point of our diameter. We have the point negative 6 and 3. So here's the other end point of our diameter. So our diameter looks something like that. So the midpoint of it, just eyeballing it, maybe it's somewhere around there. And our circle looks something. Again, this is just a sketch. But it looks something like that. So we need to find this center. And we need to find the length of the radius in order to come up with the equation. So let's go ahead. So to find the center... Well, that's just the midpoint of our two points. Let's call it A and B. So it's a midpoint of a line segment, AB. So it's just the average of the x values. So 4 plus minus 6 over 2. And the average of the y values. Negative 1 plus 3 over 2. So we get... 4 plus negative 6 is negative 2. Negative 2 over 2 is a negative 1. 1 plus 3, sorry, negative 1 plus 3 is 2. And 2 divided by 2 is positive 1. So that makes sense with our diagram. It looks like it's at negative 1, 1. So we have the center of our circle. Now we just need the radius. So remember, the radius is half the length of the diameter. So if we can figure out what the diameter is, well, that's just the diameter is the distance between the two points on it. And the two points 
or of course, 4, negative 1, and negative 6, 3. So we'll take the difference of the x-coordinates, 4 minus minus 6, square it, and the difference of the y-coordinates, negative 1, sorry, negative 1 minus 3 squared. So this is going to be half of the square root of, well, 4 minus minus 6 is 10. 10 squared is 100. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. So this is the square root of, sorry, half the square root of 116. Let's simplify this a little bit. So I'm going to show you a little, a little tip here. So remember, um, the square root of 4 is 2. So I can rewrite this as 1 over root 4 times the square root of 116, which is, well, this is the same thing as the square root of 116 over the square root of 4, which is, let's make a little more room here, the same thing as, well, we're dividing square roots. You can divide um, what's inside of them, 116 over 4. Square roots play nicely with both uh, multiplication and division, so this isn't a problem. And then we do a little long division, or just cancel out factors, and we get that this is the square root of 29. So we get that the length of r, this length here, I'll do in green, this length here is the square root 29, which is between 5 and 6. So the equation of my circle, remember we have the center point here, I'll just mark it here, this is our center point, negative 1, 1, and this radius, square root 29. So it's going to be square root 29 squared, so r squared equals x minus the x coordinate of the center, negative 1 squared, plus y minus the y coordinate of the center, 1 squared. And let's simplify this a little bit to make it look nicer. Square root of 29 squared is, of course, 29. And x minus a minus 1 is, of course, x plus 1 squared. And then we'll just write y minus 1 squared. So here is the equation of the circle above. And the last question I'll ask is the point, well, let's take a guess at a point on here. Maybe something along the lines of what? 5, 0. Is the point 5, 0 on our circle? Well, let's check. Let's fill it in. So, 29, does that equal 5 plus 1 squared plus... 0 minus 1 squared. Just plugging in my x values and my y values into the equation. Here's our x and here's our y. And we just calculate this. 29 does that equal, well, 5 plus 1 is 6. 6 squared is 36. And then 1 squared is 1, which is 37. And 29 doesn't equal 37. So we guess 5, 0 is not on our circle.